honestly, genuinely grateful to God, first of all, and to everybody. Yeah. And it's mind blowing, you know, moving from lane A to Z and it worked. So yeah. for me, I think, I feel like one legend that I've done something nobody was expecting to do. Yeah. yeah, from the first day I dropped that book, before the release, I knew because um, I know how I feel when I listen to it after recording it. I recorded it August last year, so before the release, I was playing it myself. I knew there was something about it. I was very sure. Most people around me said, no, I don't release one of these, but I was kind of sure. So when it went out the first day, when I saw the download and I saw the response, I was like, even if it's just these people already, I'm satisfied. And the second day became something else, the next week, like that, and it keeps growing every day, so. It was recorded in uh, the East Newy, so uh, my producer, Akras, was recorded in the studio, some part of it, and when I was in the final part of it, I brought him to Lagos to my house, and we recorded in my house. What inspired the song? Well, I'll say it's um, to be straight about it. I'll say it's my brother. You know, everybody that knows him knows he likes that sound. I love the sound too, but I wasn't too crazy about it. But my brother was so crazy about it. So each time I'm doing any party or whatever, he brings it in again to keep playing. And when they play, I see different tribes, whether they are Igbo or not. But we enjoy it. We love the vibe. Uh, 2018, I started a journey like trying to promote uh, the high life sound also in my YouTube way. So I knew that sound was big. So I now thought of it. I remember when Ogden in the village in August, during the August break, and my brother was vibing to that song. And I'm like, no, I need to make this digital. I need to record this and put it out. And that was how I just decided, like, Need to try this. I need to take the risk and try it. And that was it. Yeah, sure, definitely. I'm working on the video already. Um, the plans are almost done. We're going to be shooting it. Trust me, it's going to be mind blowing. It's going to be amazing. Something different, something legendary. We're starting with the first one, and after that, we'll move to the second one. And um, I hope my fans will not keep asking for because now they're already typing volume three. They're always in a hurry in this country. So, but for now, we'll do one and two. I don't know what's happening to three and four. Because if you leave me, I'll go to six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've recorded three and four. I'm just looking at everybody and they are looking at me. So, whatever they decide, whatever they decide, is my job. <laughs> Definitely, I'll be doing an album before the last quarter of the year, definitely. Oh, not cultural praise, but cultural praise, um, definitely have an EP, maybe put it as a body of work and give it out. Uh, because uh, my fans really love it and they appreciate the direction and the sound. So I think it would be ideal to put it in a body of work and hand it over to them to enjoy themselves. So that is also in the making, we're almost done with that. And after that, back to reality. I will give them an album. Uh, well, I would just say, yeah, it's just what God has this thing for them. Uh, because I also met them through my brother. So I went um, to some event with my brother, and the guys were playing us into the car. Like, so they always go out to events when they see people guests coming in and going out they play and follow you and give them something so they were playing for my brother and it was so nice i just chose them there were about three of them i just chose them and they gave me what i wanted yeah what i think i think for me it might just be now that most people will understand that i've been switching from the one you know from the beginning of my career i've been switching from one general own brand of sound to the other. I love to do it. So I'm not one of those artists that can be boxed in one place. Um, I can do an R&B song, I can rap, 
I remember when we did Senge Menge, I did yeah. rap. You know, when we did the comic song, Siongbo, I was sounding like an epic man. You know, everybody thought I was from there. You know, I've done Fuji song with Olamide. I've done quite a lot of um, genre of music. And I think the idea behind it is my roots. You know, my father was a DJ, so I was born and raised in a record store. So I listened to different sounds. I grew up with so many sounds in my brain country music, name it. So I I have them all here. So I can interpret any song, even if I can write that genre of music, give it to me, I can deliver. So I told myself that I'm not just gonna be that artist I'll be known for this alone. Some people who work for them, but for me, I'm like, I'm just here to have fun with music. And it wasn't about money making. It wasn't about proving myself. This was just what I love to do. So. I was able to switch from one point to the other at any time. I also did dance hall in Ajegule. I started from the ghetto. So my first sound then was dance hall. With all of us were doing dance hall thing. You know, so I'm stuff. Yeah. yeah. All those days we're doing Galala in AJ, Marvelous Benji, then Shoki, Lava Frio, Downfall Drivers, name it. And I left that zone. I came out of I did go to Keja and switch from that. <sighs> it's about 15 years or more now. I'm not mistaken. It's probably more. Say again? It's probably more. Yeah, probably more. I think about 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 15, 16 years. You know, that was when I left AJ. I left AJ, I went to Kirikiri Town, stayed a little bit, went to Suleri, from Suleri to Keja. You know, all the time I was moving, you know, it wasn't soft though, it was just hustling. <laughs> Looking for where to hide your head. Yeah. After landlord threw me out of the house in AJ, you know, so until now I found somewhere in Omoli, and since then I've been in Omoli, so. The tribe, well, the people that were more in AJ then were Delta people, people from most of my neighbors were Yoruba, so my landlord was a Yoruba man, the first compound I was staying. Most of my neighbors were people from Delta State, you know, Shekiri. Uh, so Ajegule is mixed with a lot of people. The Igbos are a lot there. The Shekiris, the Jaws are plenty. Remember when they had the Shekiri Jaw fight in yeah. AJ? So a lot of them are there. Uh, that's also the part Shoki is from. So it's mixed. Then evil people, a lot of evil traders are also there. So um, I'll say I mix up with a lot of people. We in school then. School in Tolua, school in Tolu Primary School. Uh, it was good, you know, but it was more Yoruba. Do you understand? <laughs> so, even my secondary school in the Solo, Central High School in the Solo, was more of Yoruba, where your English teacher comes into the class and also starts with Yoruba. You know, subject Anileni, <laughs> English. <laughs> you know, understand? So, you know, I have no choice. I had to pick it. So, I learned that Yoruba language and Played soccer. I was a soccer player at some point. So most of the boys who play soccer with me, good, mostly Yoruba boys. So we speak Yoruba and whether you are Igbo or not, you must somehow pick it. So I think my parents uh, did a great job raising us, and they were always taking us back home. And like I said, my father was a DJ, a trader. He was selling records, LP. They call it LP and cassettes then. You know, VHS, you know, being away, you understand? So he had about four record stores. So a lot of evil boys, he normally brings them from the East, you know, to learn the trade, to help them. And these guys, when they come, they don't know a word of English. They don't know Pigeon. All they know is Igbo. So they come to Lagos, they start learning from us. So how do we learn? How do we teach them? We have no choice. They have to teach us Igbo some, somehow because our parents were speaking a lot of Igbo to them, to us. So we picked the Igbo from them and they learned the English from us. You know, it was just like that simple. And we're always going back home and, you know, then high life music, cultural music, were the order of the day in Nigeria. It was them, uh, Benny Zaube, Sonia Day, Oliver De Cook, uh, Peacocks, a lot of those old music. So it was more of, high life music even the Ghanaian music was more high life you know so i'm listening to all those 
music then helps me grind in myself, you know, in my culture and I still have my local feel 100 percent Like if I travel anywhere, I want local food. If I'm doing anything, I remember my roots, you know. So you just can't leave me because it's the you know, the upbringing. Sometime last year I was in AJ. You know, but these days you don't go to a Jenny anymore. It's for someone like me. I kind of, I'll be honest, I go to AJ, you know, but I think um, I was there last year, but not really exposed. It was just enclosed in a car and all that. Two years ago, I had events in Bantry, I had some club appearances, you know, just to make sure I reach out to my people back there and all that. Then I still get to talk to some of them, you know. That are still there and that are out of there. I remember I and my brother went there um, a couple of years ago, about three years, and went to reach out. We took a bag of rice, tin tomatoes, some food stuff, and cash to them. I was in tears. We took um, CNN, you know, they were doing me and my brother interview 2018 or so, 19, and they needed to know our route. And we took them to AJ, we took them to the compound, they gave back to us. We still fresh water from, you know, I was in tears. Some people have been there 40 years ago, 50 years ago, they are still there, you know, they are, they are still happy, yeah. you know, poverty is huge though, no doubt, but they are still happy, so I, I, I broke down in tears, I was so grateful to God and I still had my mind straight like, hey, we need to reach out every time to make sure it's possible because we are privileged, yeah. not just that we're the best, just privileged. Okay, um, what makes me happy? What makes me happy? Honestly, um, my happiness is to see other people happy, which has also been my problem, if you understand. And so they're training me to, you know, be careful because um, I, I always want to make sure that everybody's okay, everybody's fine, I go out of my way. So the question to the answer to the question is just going to be, I love to see people happy. So I do whatever I can to make people happy, to make the people around me happy. That gives me a lot of joy. So for instance, I see a neighbor that is hungry. I want to make sure you're, you're okay, you're feeding. You know, I see a friend I need, there's a need. Yeah, but some people have taught us how to be, to lock up. Celebrity. A lot of people. <laughs> I've taught us how to lock up, so but we can never give up. We'll definitely still support. And for me, I derive a lot of joy in making people happy. Yeah, Kenny's music, Kenny's music. Well, it was a journey. It was a journey that uh, started while I was on tour with Gold Circle. Condom years back, we were on tour going from campuses That's to awesome. campuses. That was before StarQuest. So it was StarQuest that led to signing on the Kennis because the agreement was with um, the breweries where if you get to win, you're going to be signed on the Kennis for one year and you're going to be given cash prize and all. So we won. So automatically we got on the Kennis. And, but after our first year contract, we're supposed to leave, but we're doing good. Kennedy retained us for a couple of years. So we did extra three years with Kennedy before we left. Music. If you're on the Kennys, you've made it. Your parents will go and give thanksgiving and testimony, which my parents did. <laughs> they did. We went to the church to thank God. Kenny's music, baby. It's Kenny's music, baby. Prime time jazz. We're there. So if you're on that platform, forget it. Go and sleep. And this, those guys were, they know how to sell anything. So Kenny has a motto with D1. They will say, if they don't like her, they go sing her. If they don't like her, they go chop her. That's what they used to tell us. They don't need to, you, as an artist, they don't really need you to be over good. You already, or if they present you, you don't blow. So it was a privilege. Um, I signed on the Kennys before Two Face came in, you know, so it was immediately after we got in, Two Face came in. So it was, it was a hit. Those guys were just making hits back to back with different artists, so. Yeah, it is six. Nobody has done that, trust me. I don't nobody think anybody can beat it. Nobody's close. Nobody, nobody's close. Nobody will ever be close to it. Trust me, with even what the generation is doing right now, nobody can ever get 
anywhere close to that. Those guys need a lot of respect. And they changed the industry, working with them. They were these guys that were not interested about money. They were interested about the culture. They were interested about, you know, bringing what they learned from the States back home. And that's what a lot of people need to do. You know, I think those guys changed the face of the game. Before the game, it was a junior and pretty. It was, the focus was in AJ, you know, Aj Gule, dance hall and junior and pretty rap. But when those guys came, Kenny and D1, ah, they brought freshness, swag, attitude. Then they picked up Idris and Setwila and Eddie. They started giving us vibe, style, hip hop. You know, the culture changed a little bit. And from there, that was when the Afrobeat was given birth to. It was from that generation. They changed it. So I think they need more accolades and respect in the industry. Um, I think I was one of we're one of those artists that left Tennis Nation in peace. It was it was a good relationship. We only we grew then, we grew up and we understood the business. So we needed to do our own. So we left and we opened our own label. And we ran it for one year, we shut it down. And we signed another label. <laughs> You know, sometimes we artists, we are very greedy, we are very stubborn. We, when we get to see people sharing us up, we forget the roots, we forget the people that have invested in us. We never had any fight with Kenneth, you can see the interview, but a lot of artists had a lot of fights with them. And later we all found out, even those that had fight with them knew that, oh, these guys are actually doing a lot. You know, so I think artists generally around the world, uh, or let me not say around the world, because Americans, some of them are still in their labor, have their own labor, they are still in their labor. But yeah, if they just hail you two times, hey, 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 throw red carpet for you, guests are hug hugging you, snapping you, you have arrived. And you forget there are people that invested in you, you forgot all the good parts and the whole struggle. Some people lay down for you before you found your way. So I think those narratives also need to change. It's still existing till today. And we never had any quarrel with Kenny's. We left. And when we started ours, Body tell us, we knew that some people were doing something good and huge for us and we missed it. And it wasn't easy to go back. If we had our way, we would have gone back. But pride no good let us. We still struggled. <laughs> and uh, at that point, things went slow. And we picked up because me, I'm a die hustler. I don't give up in life. Never. So I fought so hard. We saw one other guy that has money, our guy. He was looking for fame. He has money. And he signed us. He was giving us money. We we're not getting the same impact we were getting when we were on the candy. So money is not everything. The guy was giving us money, buying us anything we want. Shoot the best video. We'll travel everywhere to shoot video. Oh, your music blow now. You not go blow. You know, so it was crazy. Then after that era, we now went back again to strategize and set up our own label. You know, it was still resembling the one we did before. <laughs> so when we finished that level, uh, that broke up with Presh. You know, when we broke up, um, it was when I gave birth to the idea five star. You know, the idea came and I had to do that with my brother. I can't say partnership because my brother and I were like one. So. My fight is his fight, his fight is mine. So we like, oh, we need to do this. And set up Five Star, started running it. So from then, I started doing it properly. Started, um, you know, building my own structure on the ground to the surface like that. It became strong. From there, it worked for us. And, you know, signed other artists, worked with them. They brought their own drama. You know, drama will never end. Yeah. They keep bringing drama and all that. But I think I'll take this opportunity to have, also talk to a lot of the up and coming artists. They affect the ones coming because sometimes a lot of investors are running away. They are pulling out. You can't invest so much money in somebody's career. Let me tell you, your career and your talent can be there and nobody will ever say like gold. If somebody don't mind those gold and refine them, you know, package them, make them look so nice, convert them to something that somebody wants to buy, nobody will buy it. So don't forget those processes. People invested, people gave you their time and their connection and their contact. 
always remember that the least you can do is to be grateful. Not just for yourself or the ones coming behind you because your kids might want to do the same thing you're doing. Or your, or your brothers or your sister's kids. So if you close the door for them, who's going to help them? So my advice is let us respect our contracts and agreements and respect the culture also. Enough of all those fights with labels and all that. I think we should, we should learn how to obey the contract. Yeah, well, cool in the sense that, well, for me, I'm cool also. Um, we, the drama, everybody has settled it in their mind. The world can settle the drama in their mind. Because the truth is, when issues like that comes up, um, everybody has their face of the story. Everybody has their die-hard fan base. Everybody wants to support. But reality can never be wiped away. Do you understand? The truth can never be covered. A lot of things went down and it's only time that will still tell more and hear everybody. That's the truth. But for me, my heart is open. I don't know about Seto. I don't have beef with anybody. Um, I think Harry wronged me and I think he needs to say sorry to me. That's just what I'm saying today. And saying sorry is different from going to social media. You know, if you genuinely and you believe and you know the truth, the truth will set you free. You know, when you don't say the truth, in 20 years, you say even when you're dead, you look for a way to come back and say the truth. So, but for me, I'm good. Well, Skiddy, 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 Skiddy. Skiddy was this guy. Um, Sulere, somebody brought Skiddy to me. And when Just they. Yeah, no, then I left Sule, I was in Omoli. I think um, uh, Soso I worked with brought him. Your manager? Yeah, brought him and it was like, brought like three other guys and it was like, hey, I should sign them, I should sign them, that these guys are good. And when I saw Skiddy, I was like, I like this guy. I just dragged him. I was traveling that day, I was at the airport, I said, join me. Yeah, I asked him, let's go. I think it was Abuja or where. But I know we're traveling. I bought a ticket for him. First time meeting him. And we traveled. And while we're in the plane, I sat with him. I was giving, I was, I like, I like your spirit. I, like, I don't know. I've not even heard him say himself. But I just liked him. His energy is cool. Yeah, you know, and there's this thing about me. I see, you know, no bragging, but I have a strong energy when I see grace, when I see, when I see positive people. I know how to identify it. I connect easily because I have a very strong grace. No bragging. I know what I have. So when I see one, I know. So when I saw him, I told him, I, I was telling him, I said, music or no music, if you do anything, you will succeed. That's the kind of destiny you have. So anything you touch, you must succeed. It might be delayed. Ask Kiddy, I told him, from day one. So when he signed on the tennis, uh, on the five star, you know, I was singing anything. I bought him a brand new car. I owned that Jeep XUV. When I was buying for my mom, I bought two. The same car I bought for my mom that year. I gave him one. I gave my mom. I gave my mom a white, gave him a black. Tear rubber. Delivered from I owned that to my house. He has no contract. You know, that was the confidence. I needed to impact confidence in him. That was how I felt. So and he was loyal, he was excited. And every day of his life with Five Star, all he was struggling to do was how to impress us, how to make sure that confidence we believed and everything we had would never regretted it. So Skiddy is also this guy that fights anytime, any day to prove, you know, I think, I think Skiddy is still gonna go far than where he is right now because he's one guy that doesn't say no. He doesn't take no for an answer. So, and I think if you follow his career, you will see that whether you like him or not, he's up in your face. And you don't have to like Skiddy. You don't have to like KC. You dare your face. That kind of power. Inyaya too. I remember how I met Inyaya in Calabar many years ago. Most people don't know I met Inyaya in Calabar. The first flight ever in his life was me. I brought him to Lagos. He stayed with me in my house. Yes. Before he won Project Fame and all that, you know, and thank God today he's a star, superstar. So those are my benefits, like seeing people passing through, 
you know, the platform and get to the success story also. It makes me happy. <music>
There should be reality. There should be some of some of them they they carry the way they now start. When they see you, they will make you feel less of yourself. Some of them, if they see me sometimes, they don't want to dance to my song. They'll be like, this one, they have money too much now. What is he doing in the industry? They even say to me, they pass your year, maybe year. But this thing I'm doing, I did not say I'm doing it for money or anything. Now. But I'm still getting money out of it. You know what I mean? So for me, the industry have not been fair. But that word you said, shocker. God has been shocking them. And he will keep shock them, shocking them until they are shocked. Look at me now. You can't stop me. Not because I'm proud. I'm very, those that know me know I'm very playful, down to earth and all. But I'm saying this today because I need some upcoming artists to know the truth. I need a lot of people to learn that, you know, you need to believe in yourself. What you have, what you believe in. Don't let the judgment of the people or the industry deceive you or weigh you down. You know, because if I listen to or followed the judgment of the industry or the analyzation of music I hear on TV sometimes. I might go and give up. I'll say, upon all the effort. But when I get on stage, the way my fans react to my music and the way they sing my song, I'll be asking, what's happening? This thing is not balancing. You understand? So I think um, for me, I've learned a lot. I've learned that what anybody says doesn't matter. It's what God says and what I believe in. You know, that's it. Thank you.